Fox 2 News starts now. Tonight, the Fox 2 problem solvers are about to expose a shady deal involving city councilwoman Monica Conyers. The issue is whether Conyers got a special deal from a contractor doing business with the city. Here's problem solver Scott Lewis. Hewlett and Monica, we've heard a lot about Monica Conyers lately. First, she threatened one of the mayor's appointees at a pension meeting. Then she called the city council president Shrek. Now the problem solvers have uncovered something new about Conyers that raises questions about her judgment. So it's not about being in the hip pocket, because I'm not in the hip pocket of anybody. That's what Monica Conyers said on a recent segment of Let It Rip. And I'm about to expose her cozy relationship with a towing contractor named Gaspar Fiore. Fiore makes a lot of money from police towing contracts in Detroit, contracts that are approved by the city council. And with those lucrative deals now going up for new bids, Fiore could need Monica Conyers' vote. That's why this car Conyers got for her teenage son last November raises eyebrows. She didn't get it from a newspaper ad or a used car lot. She got it from Gaspar Fiore, and it appears she got a sweet deal. Why would you deal with a guy like this to get a car of all the people when he's a contractor with his contract coming up? you tell the people who you work for who's mad because I put a moratorium on a contract who's paying you to do the story? Nobody's How paying. How about that? No, yes That's they ridiculous. are. Yes they are. Come on. That's her spin on the story. She's implying that one of Fiori's competitors is paying me to go after her. Now let me tell you what really happened. A few weeks back, I got a tip from an insider who told me Gaspar Fiore had given Conyers a free car. When we called Conyers, she claimed it wasn't a freebie, it was an even swap. She said she traded a GMC Jimmy for Fiore's Chrysler Sebring to get better gas mileage. Conyers wouldn't show me any paperwork to document the swap, and she refused to go on camera. When I called Gaspar Fiore, he also said it was an even swap and promised to fax me the paperwork that same day. But he didn't. The next day, he had his lawyer call me. That didn't get me anywhere either. Come outside a minute, I can talk to you about the car. I eventually flushed Fiore out at a local watering hole and got him to talk. And I had to chase Monica Conyers on her way into work. You'll hear what they have to say in a minute. Then you can decide whether Conyers got a special deal on this car. Right now, more about Gaspar Fiore. Who is this guy? And how did he get to be the king of police towing contracts in Detroit? Gaspar Fiore isn't afraid to get his hands dirty, and he looks like an average Joe. In fact, he's a wealthy man. Fiore and his wife Joan live in this $2.7 million lakefront mansion in Gross Point Shores. They own $18 million worth of real estate in ritzy Naples, Florida, a condo and a home. They own seven towing companies in Detroit and this concrete crushing plant in Sterling Heights. Recently, Fiore has been buying up a lot of commercial and industrial property in Detroit. Some of his wealth comes from his dominance of city towing contracts. According to this audit report, Fiore got preferential treatment, allowing him to get around a one-contract-per-company rule. He bought up other companies that already had police towing contracts in violation of city rules. Fiore was also tagged for overcharging the city by $700,000 for this building he rents to the police department. And auditors dinged him for overcharging the public by $300,000 for storage fees on towed cars. Still, all seven of Fiore's towing companies have police contracts controlling a quarter of the police towing business. But there's a dark cloud on the horizon that threatens to derail Fiore's towing empire. Detroit is planning to revamp the police towing business. They're taking bids for a management company to take over the whole shebang. Several big companies are expected to bid, including a local player who has even more money and more political clout than Gaspar Fiore. Tony Suave, a guy with a $1.6 billion business portfolio, is expected to make a play for the towing contract. Suave is already big in the scrap business with a car shredder and two brand new giant operations selling used car parts. If he gets the police towing contracts to feed his scrap and parts businesses, he'll have it all. Current police towing companies, including Gaspar Fiore, could find themselves on the outside looking in. And that brings us back to Monica Conyers. She led the way in city council to put the towing contract on hold, buying time for Fiore and other towing operators. And then she gets a deal on a car from Fiore? This was the deal that was supposedly an even swap. Conyers gives Fiore a 2000 Jimmy with 120,000 miles on it. She gets a Chrysler Sebring, two years newer, and 100,000 fewer miles on it. Does that seem like a fair deal to you? 
Remember, Conyers refused to talk to me on camera, but then something unusual happened. Before my story ever aired, she went on Fox 2's Let It Rip. They were talking about Mayor Kilpatrick, when out of the blue, she changed the subject and blurted out something about the car deal. Apparently, it was a preemptive strike. Not exactly a let it rip, more of a let it drip. Every time on the news, it's what they perceive, such as my son has a car, we got it for free, or we got it for 120,000 miles. How was that even? It's about perception. It is about what the news media and the newspapers decide that that's what they want to put out there. And however they slant it is how they slant it to make people read it. The next morning, I was waiting for Conyers when she showed up for work. I need to talk to you about the car you got from Gas for Fury. Last night I know, on but the you TV. Didn't, but you didn't answer the questions. Did he give you a free car? Listen to your story. I was in your house. Well, but you didn't really answer the questions. Did you give her a free car? No, I didn't. When I caught up with Gas for Fiore, he insisted Monica it wasn't even swapped. I traded my car for her car. The title to her car is still in her name. That's correct. I used her car for parts. Aren't you supposed to do something with the Secretary of State when you buy that car? No. And I don't have no more comment for you, Scott. Fiore later showed me the title for Conyers' car, but he had no paperwork documenting the swap. And if there was a trade, was it really even? I used it. I, I had a use for her car. But the car you gave her had 22,000 miles on it. It doesn't seem like a trade. Right. Why doesn't it? Would you give other people a car with 22,000 miles on I, for a car with 125? I, I saw a lot of cars. Two years older? Yes, I saw a lot of cars. Just before this story went to air, Monica Conyers sent me this press release that really makes the deal look even more lopsided. She now tells us that the GMC Jimmy had been in an accident before she swapped it. So really, she traded a wreck for a low-mileage car in tip-top shape. Conyers claims in her statement that because the Jimmy was no longer in production, the value of the parts was greater than the cost of the Sebring. But wait a minute. We called six places that buy cars for parts. The most they were willing to pay for a 2000 Jimmy was $1,000, and that was if it was in good condition. That's $4,000 less than the cost of the Sebring. Now, Scott, it looks like Monica came out ahead on this mm -hmm. deal, but did she do anything illegal? Well, if she came out ahead, there's nothing illegal unless there's what's called a quid pro quo. If the politician gives something in return for what they got, and that's really hard to prove. But this really does raise ethical questions because uh, there's an ethics ordinance in Detroit that says politicians can't do anything using their office for personal gain. And the city charter is even more specific. It says they can't do anything that would even give the appearance of impropriety. Well, what's scary here, too, is you, you know that the Conyers family, she's married to Congressman John mm -hmm. Conyers, they're not poor people. No, they make good money. They can afford a car. Mm -hmm. And you also have to wonder, too, are elected officials running the city of Detroit, or is it run by two men, Fiore and Suave? Well, I don't know if you would say that they're running it, but, but there are a lot of influential people out there vying for contracts, and it's the job of the council to scrutinize these things. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need to look deeper. Deeper into it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. All right.